This week, we're going to be looking at case studies within organizational leadership. Case studies have been used in this particular field for about 100 years. However, they didn't start there. And I'll give you a second to think about where could case studies have come from. In fact, the founder of the case study method was actually a Harvard Law School student. His name was Ch uh, Christopher Langdell. And while he was in law school from 1851 to 1854, he was very studious and spent most of his time in the library, go figure. And what he was trying to do was he was working on starting uh, to formulate this case method as an uh, alternative to the ways in which he was being taught at the time. Uh, at that point in time, the Dwight method of teaching was actually the, the most popular one within law schools in particular, which was a combination of lecture, recitations, and other drills. And so this method uh, essentially relied heavily on uh, rote memorization and it didn't really allow much uh, of actual thinking to go on. Instead, just the rote repetitions of what was told to you. And so Lingdell's method was completely different. He actually required uh, some of his students, his, his fellow colleagues to read cases and actually draw their own conclusions, which is quite different from the technique at the time and even the techniques in which uh, many, many of us are taught today. Uh, and so once they came up with their conclusions, they were able to publish a set of, a set of cases with a short introduction uh, to really change the ways in which law schools are taught and they continue to be taught to this very day. Many of us learn better through using some of these um, uh, applied real life examples and case studies are a perfect epitome of that. They can be an effective way to learn vicariously through others' experiences. We know that we don't have all the time in the world and don't have all the background and experiential uh, knowledge base to be able to think through certain situations. And so the basic premise of case studies uh, that we're going to be looking at this week is going to prompt you to think about what would you do in these particular situations and scenarios. It's going to require you to really engage in contextual analysis as well as data analysis at times because we know that premature decisions are often the result of non-optimal outcomes um, and other poor decisions that really don't think about the context and the data behind them. So oftentimes we have to think about a variety of stakeholders' opinions, but where do we draw that line in the sand? How do we push forward knowing that not everyone is always going to be on board? So, First, let's think about what are case studies exactly. Let's dive a little bit deeper into that, and then we'll get on our way towards this week's study. So a case essentially is essentially or basically a story. It recounts events or problems in a way that students can learn from their complexities, their ambiguities, and their nuances. And this really enables us to dissect key information in order to find solutions to the problems that we find ourselves having within our particular school systems, for instance. We go through a five-step process whereby we, number one, <clears throat> determine pertinent information. Number two, we identify the problem and the perimeters that are within this, within this environment. Number three, we identify possible solutions. That's, that's multiple solutions, that is. And number four, we form strategies and ideas for action before finally, number five, we make decisions to fix those problems. And again, that's sort of a simplistic way to think about it, but uh, more or less, we're going to think through two different types of case studies this week. One is narrative and the second is decision forming. Narrative case studies really use a comprehensive history of a problem along with several parts of a typical case study to teach this case study method. With this method, students are really going to be trying to think about and find better solutions to the problems that they see within these situations and find ways to analyze why they chose the solution that they selected as best. And as a teaching tool, <clears throat> excuse me, narrative case studies allow students to analyze each step of the process, each step of the events to determine whether or not any solutions uh, that were not necessarily made, any other ones that is, 
were possible. Um, for the decision forming case, on the other hand, so we had narrative, the second is decision forming. This one is, it doesn't really provide an outcome and therefore it forces the students to determine an outcome of their own, which is a little bit different. And oftentimes these cases have an epilogue, uh, which really completes the overall story. And so when we think about what are the essentials, what are the common case elements within any case study. And this goes for, again, business or legal or education ones uh, in nature, they have a, a, a core formula or framework in terms of having common elements. And these are, number one, we have a decision maker who has a problem that needs to be solved. Number two, we have a description of the context of that problem, which is essential in thinking through a solution. Number three, we have data that supports the study, which could include, for instance, let's say interviews or documents or other images. Uh, case studies can be done individually, but oftentimes we find that if they are collectively done in small groups, which I would highly encourage you to think about doing this week, uh, that oftentimes students together can problem solve to a greater degree than they could individually. And so the case study method that, um, that I really recommend a, how to attack um, in terms of a framework or a checklist to think about when we're analyzing case studies is the following. Number one, I would encourage you to first and foremost, thoroughly read the case. I know it sounds obvious, but thoroughly read it and formulate your own opinions before sharing those ideas with others in your group or in the class as a whole. You must be able to identify the problems on your own, as well as be able to offer solutions and alternatives. So before the study is discussed with the group, you really have to be able to think through a few different things, including forming your own outline and your course of action. You don't want your ideas to be biased by hearing other people's, you need to start with your own. Number two, you need uh, once you have that clear understanding of the case from reading it, maybe rereading it, you can share your ideas with other members of your group. Number three, you're going to engage in an open discussion of the case and listen to the input of others in your group or class. And number four, you're going to reflect back on your original ideas um, and how those have changed uh, or not as a result of the group discussion. So I hope that's been helpful when thinking through the history of case studies what a case study is and how to think about the essential elements of it, as well as attacking it when we're looking at those this week in our course of study. I wish you all the best and feel free to reach out with any questions you have along the way.